Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reselling Rhythms. My name is Adam, and my channel's name is Adam's Exploits. This is a live stream. It's typically at 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. That's Eastern Time, uh, where I interview other resellers. Uh, I do reselling part-time. Uh, I have a disability, and I've discussed that before on this channel, so I do this to, to keep myself busy. Um, I have both my parents and my uh, sister uh, were school teachers, so I enjoy helping others and uh, teaching others. So uh, that's why I enjoy doing this, and then when I bring on guests to, to educate my viewers and to educate me. So uh, we're just going to wait for the chat to fill in a little bit, guys. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming the, the, it looks like the announcement just went out, even though I did the, the pre 30 minute announcement for some reason, YouTube's been wonky. So again, I want to thank all of you for being here. I'm going to say hello to a few people in the chat, uh, and then we're all into it. Uh, again, uh, earlier on we had, uh, Alexis was in the chat and we had Glenn's the swamp picker was in the chat. Uh, I'm assuming they're coming back. Uh, Craig Landshark picker. Anna Mora. I don't know, Anna Mora likes when I sing her name. Looks like Alexis is back. So it looks like we have a handful of people, guys. I'm just going to give like another 30 seconds. I'm going to give you a little, little, little mini introduction of, of our guest. Um, our guest, Beth, reseller rowboat, whose channel used to be called Ten of Hearts, uh, is a reseller and she's working a um, basically part time um reselling and part-time uh a job she's really really doing both kind of sort of full-time but i mean that her ultimate plan is to roll into um reselling full-time uh she does a lot of her sourcing at the uh, goodwill outlets the bins so we're gonna get into that and beth i uh, call beth the queen of organization uh, she's very into uh bullet journals uh being organized uh beth has a youtube channel and the reseller rowboat um beth has a channel where she discusses reselling but she also wants to be like the um again this might be a weird way to say it, but like the mama hen she likes showing support to the other resellers we were just had a pre-chat about before the show about how reselling is kind of lonely uh and everyone's kind of like our co-workers out there um if you're going through some issues some health issues or whatever best kind of there to, to, to lend support and kind of like rally the reselling community um, she asked for people's birthdays. She likes knowing people's names, et cetera, et cetera. So it looks like we have a, a few people in the chat now, guys. So we're going to roll in. Hey, J Dog. What's up, Mr. Chris? Thanks for joining us, Mr. Thrift Beast. So, okay, we're going to roll in. We're going to have a Miss Beth introduce herself, and we will get this party started. Thanks for joining us, guys. Miss Beth, you are. Hi, every Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? I see some faces I've never met before. So this is exciting. Thank you for having me on, Adam. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on. So, uh, what should I talk about? <laughs> what you, you doing? Right to right to you to tell us about where you're from, um, your background. I just learned that you had a bookstore. I had no idea you owned the bookstore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I basically, synopsis. I'm basically a native Texan. I came here from Indiana when I was one year old, and uh, so I've been in the Houston area most of my life. And um, yeah, I did have a bookstore. Let's go back a few years. I was homeschooling both of my daughters and um, I needed a job where I could, you know, have my kids with me. And so um, I opened a homeschooling store um, on Main Street in a little teeny tiny town. And it was in 900 square feet. And the next year we moved in 1300 square feet. And the year after that, we moved into 3000 square feet in the last five or six years we were in 6,000 square feet and it grew into not only a homeschooling bookstore but it also grew into a resale bookstore teaching supplies girl scouts boy scouts I mean I was just selling anything I could do to make a living and um, so yeah I ended up closing that down in 2009 because um, a little thing called Amazon and internet sales were really kicking my butt on uh, free shipping 40 percent off that kind of thing and um, just couldn't keep the lights on anymore. So, so I'm no longer doing that. Hey, Hickory Springs. Good to see you. Hey, Pernini. Good to see you also. So, yeah, anyway, um, I do have a teaching background. I graduated with a bilingual education degree. And um, after three years of teaching in public school, I got my Montessori certification. 
And I have recently opened up a new um, YouTube channel. It's called Teach This, where I'm teaching parents how to teach basic skills to their kids using Montessori materials that they can either purchase or make at home. So doing that as well. Okay, um, you, I don't know what else you want to know. I do have a new granddaughter. Have a grandson and a granddaughter. You get married, um, mm -hmm. and your wife works in the uh, the legal profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I do as well. I work in the legal profession as well. Um, I work from home so that I can do this as well. So I'm taking care of several people um, in my family, and just kind of I'm, I'm kind of like on call um, when people need me for things. So I wanted to be home and be available to take people to doctor's appointments or, you know, I also have another granddaughter on the way or grandbaby on the way. We don't know if it's a boy or girl yet, but you haven't had May. The girl yet? <laughs> no, not yet. So that one's coming in May. Um, so yeah. And that's yeah, that's you, guys in. You're, you're probably wondering what these yellow ores are. Eventually we'll get in that later. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. We're going to discuss reselling in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so how long did you sit for what, for three years you were actually were a, a teacher? Oh, I taught for 25 years, um, in, but for three well, years, for I was a bilingual ed teacher, taught okay. first grade and um, saved up enough money to get the, my Montessori certification, which is pretty much equivalent to a master's degree in a year. And then from then on, I taught in Montessori, public and private sectors, and also homeschooled my kids through high school. So I have over 25 years of teaching experience. And um, I taught children who were blind and deaf. I had um, a child with no arms from the um, above the elbows up. I taught him how to write in cursive. Wow. Um, I've taught children in wheelchairs, children with um like a cerebral palsy that have no use of their arms, um, ADHD, mentally disturbed. I've seen it all. <laughs> so, uh, well, but I'm, I'm done with ADHD teaching that. Before there was ADHD. Yes. Uh, yes. Before so, uh, and I've had as many as 32 different children in my classroom, just me, all doing different things. If you know anything about Montessori, they're all doing different activities at the same time. So I had to be organized. Right. So that's probably where my organization comes from, I would think, is just having to know I had first, second, and third grade in the same classroom, all working on 32 different things at one time. So having to keep track of that, where they're at, you know, how they're doing, probably contributed to my organization skills, I would think. And it was either sink or swim. <laughs> and in, individual students had individual skills and needs as well. Right. So you had, uh, had lesson plans or I don't know. I, I forget what they call them now. My sister used to tell me there's, what do they call that? Like, not a, I call it a sports thing, game plan. What, what's it it's called? A lesson plan. It's Pardon a lesson me? plan. It's a lesson plan. It's a lesson plan. But I mean, yeah. there's like for specific students, there's way mm -hmm. to do. We had work plans and each one had a work plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so you, had, then, you had to be organized because you had individuals with needs and uh, different mm -hmm. skills and different abilities, and you had to concentrate on individually on them, plus the overall classroom. And yeah, and then every and, six or nine weeks, you had to sit down and write down to the parents what each child knew how to do and where right. they were at. So you had to report that back to the parents, you know. So I think that really contributed, I would think, to my organizational skills. Now, okay. physically, I'm not organized. Like my house looks like a tornado. But <laughs> mentally, <laughs> mentally you, got, you got all kind of filing cabinets and folders. <laughs> mentally, I'm quite organized. Hey, Crystal, right. nice to see you. Hey, Michelle, Misha, good to see you. Um, so I know you asked me to tell the people why I started reselling. Yes. So I was writing a novel and I worked on it for over 10 years. Um, when I was seven years old, I almost drowned in Galveston Ooh. and I had a, um, what you would call a life review when you're about to die. Um, you some like people have, you? yes. And I was only seven years old I and I had that. that. So I can tell you, it really does happen to some people. Wow. It happened to me and I never really talked about it much, um, when never I was younger happened. because right. I didn't really know that it was unusual. Right. Um, so I ended up starting writing a novel based on what happened to me. Um, and I got, 10 years into the process and I have obsessive compulsive disorder, I have OCD. Um, I don't have the hand washing kind. I have what's um, it's mental. And so um, 
I could not edit the book. I could never get it right. I could never finish it. And so if you had I, that perfection, you always wanted yeah, to do it, right? Yeah. And um, it was just, it was horrible. And I finally, one day I made the decision to stop writing the book and I had all this time and I didn't know what to do with my brain because the kind of OCD that I have, you have to keep thinking, you know, you have to keep your brain moving or you're just really going to get stuck in this circle. Right. So um, my friend and I were out uh, at a thrift store one day and she's throwing stuff in her cart. And I'm like, you know, Jamie, why are you putting that? You'll never wear that. That's not your size. And she's like, <laughs> well, I'm going to sell it on eBay. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I started throwing stuff in my cart that it's just amazing. Some of the stuff I was, I was so embarrassing, you know, like a, uh, a Garfield t-shirt, you know, a Nike shirt that just a regular Nike shirt. Like I'm, it's Nike. Somebody will buy this. You know, I had no think. clue, you know, you would think. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I got started selling online because I needed something. My, my issue is checking. I don't, I don't check doors and I don't check ovens. I check things mentally. And so eBay gave me the, you know, checking the prices, checking the comps, checking the sales, check, you know, check, 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 check. And it fed that need Keep that I mind, have, OCD constantly. has to constantly be checking, changing, mm -hmm. moving, arranging things. And um, so that's why I do it. I mean, that's, I'm just going to be really honest with you. If I didn't have this, um, I don't, I don't know what I would do, but this is what keeps me Keeps well, my OCD in check. <laughs> and again, you you and I have discussed this, and I've discussed this before. And I'm going to try to discuss this as little as possible about medical issues. But I like to say a lot of times the uh, the cure is worse than the ill. So you're not medicated. So you, you basically medicating yourself by keeping your mind busy instead of mm -hmm. being on some kind of pharmaceutical that's going to possibly have all kind of side effects. Right. So I I. I applaud you for that. So I mean, that's, I've never really heard of other people going into selling for that reason. So I right, just I've never had put either, that out that, a great reason. that out there that, you know, I mean, I do need the money, right? Um, right. Once I started selling and realized I can make money, that's when I was like, okay, I want to do this um, pretty much full time. I want to be home. I want to be able to see my grandkids when I want to see my grandkids. Right. I don't want to drive. You I spend what, your, your wife's parents live close and they have around the corner. Right. Um, I don't want to spend three hours a day in the car commuting because it takes me that long. When I do go in, I go in the office yeah, twice a week. Um, I'm sitting in, in the car going, I could be home. I could be home doing anything I wanted when I'm in the car. Right. right. You know, so yeah, I'm still having trouble letting go of that job. Um, but it, it's down, it's coming down the road. Um, so my ideal thing would be to just go in on weekends and do accounting for the guy. Right. And um, but that's just not happening right now. So now you said it was legal. Now, I thought that had something to do with you were running some kind of events or something. Weren't you involved? Like a uh, no, I run a mediation center. Oh, mediation uh, center. Okay, but we don't, but we don't do family law, thank God. Okay, but we do have. Um, it's really not that much different than working with children, <laughs> uh, working with attorneys. They're just a little taller. <laughs> um, a little taller. They, like, they like things done their way, and um, right. so my clients are attorneys, and um, and then I also have their clients coming in who are usually distraught, upset crying so being a teacher has helped so me with that lot, because lot of I have high, a, anxiety, a lot of yeah yeah and i speak spanish i used to be fluent when okay. i was a Bible teacher so well, the things I learned about people come in your death experience i didn't know you spoke spanish fluently i didn't know you had a yeah. book before well i used to speak spanish fluent but well, it helps uh, because uh, when you've got someone you know well, i live in houston so we have a lot of spanish speaking right. people right. so when they come in and they're crying they want to speak in their native language right and so i can talk to them uh, before, if they get there before their attorney, they're usually just like, you know, where's my attorney? And, you know, oh, yeah. so I like to uh, calm people so down. You, it's the mother hand, the teacher and you, and you can help mm -hmm. yeah. control them and yeah. keep them right. Cut yep. a cup of coffee, sit down, everything's going to be fine, you know. <laughs> so that part Believe of the job me. I like. I just don't like being in the car for three hours a day to get there, you know, and I don't. I don't like working for someone else and they're getting the money and I'm not really getting it. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good reason I've never been. Yeah. Well, see, that's, that's part of the thing that really annoyed me about my um, my job when I was working retail. I mean, I had 30 plus years experience in that field with a bachelor's degree in business. 
and I was basically a glorified clerk, and then I get hurt, you know, and they don't want to pay my workman's comp. I mean, let me put my earbuds in. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Uh, yeah, they didn't want to pay my workman's comp. Mm -hmm. Just remind me, I got to take these down. I got something to show later, so I wanted to... Oh, yeah, um, Crystal said her son has diagnosed OCD as well. Yeah, I know that um, several of my autistic students that I've had in the past have also had OCD. I think that sometimes, you know, it's a pretty high um, rate of uh, autistic children have OCD. Uh, hey, right. Gina, nice to see you. Good to see All you right. here. So now, now if there's, there's feedback, you guys want to hear it. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Where were we? You're talking about. I know you said that uh, Crystal's son has OCD. And yeah, I know he's on the autism spectrum, and he also. And I, yeah. I know a lot of my. I've taught a lot of autistic children as well, and a majority of them, I would say, also had OCD. Right. Tend at least tendencies. So. Um, and Alexa says she has a similar situation to you. That's why she's in the reselling. Oh really? I put that in the banner below. Yeah. Oh, that, I've never met anyone yeah. else that's had I that. I haven't heard that either. Thanks mm -hmm. for sharing, Alexis. That's great. Yeah, I wasn't mm -hmm. aware of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, again, so you, you're in the, the teaching, and now you're into – you have your separate channel on uh, teaching as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one's mm -hmm. been really uh, – been ignored for the last couple of months. So, right. uh, anyway, hold on. I've got somebody calling me. <laughs> Sorry. Um yeah, so that's been ignored for the last couple of months because I, I don't know if you watched any of my recent videos, Adam, but um, in September, end of August, beginning of September, my store sales went dipped down below 50%. We had discussed that pretty show, right, right. And so I really had to step back and say, okay, I'm not doing teaching videos right now. I've got to take care of this situation. Well, that's so, good. I, mean, I wanted to roll, okay. actually roll into that about the, uh, the glitches and... Um, what adjustments you make and again your 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 mind's constantly flowing so why don't want to if you want to roll into that a little bit talk about how the sales were down and what things you're attempting to to change things well, i made a, i made a video about it a couple of weeks ago and i showed you 12 things that i was doing to generate sales um you know you're welcome to watch that it's about 20 minutes long but uh basically i remembered that you know i had um i had I had been doing best offer. So I was upping my prices quite a bit right. to take best offer. So that's one of the things I did is I lowered my price to what I would really take. And I took the best offers off of a lot of my, yeah, clo all my clothing, my clothing. I'm not talking about hard goods. Okay. Um, and another one of the things I did is I started listing my parts on Mercari, but I haven't sold any. So I don't think I'm going to be doing that anymore, but I tried it. Um, but it, it didn't work. But I, I, my Poshmark sales have increased a lot. So I've been doing just really been conscious about offering people deals. You know, if you buy three, three of these, you get it for this price. I mean, just really trying to look at, I paid a dollar for this product. I don't have to get 50 for it. You know, <laughs> I'd like to get 50 for it, but I don't have to, I paid a dollar for it, you know? Right. Um, Instead of looking at, you know, well, this person's only offering me, you know, 30. Well, I paid a dollar for it. And no, <laughs> no one else has offered me anything. Right. Why don't I just take it, you know? Right. And um, so anyway, it's working. My sales are back up now. And I think I'm on my way again. But when I, but I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so what sorry. What is with these people? I'm so <laughs> sorry. Um, Turn your phone off. <laughs> it's not my phone it's my um oh your video your skype yeah okay. anyway um when i was not working at home i was pulling in gross 2200 a month just on one ebay store wow and that was working part-time you know that was going yeah, to work every day plus, right yeah so i thought oh if i stay home i can up that right well it didn't work that way and so i haven't made that much since i um started working at home i have oh, i've never pulled in that the, amount you think it was the item specific glitch or did you have any kind of theory oh, no, this was a year ago so this is way before oh, that. So I, you said last month you were down 50 percent, right yeah 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 I don't, I don't know what it was but you just have to um you just really have to take a look at it and not feel sorry for yourself and i and i've 
have to apologize to all my friends who got calls and everything because I was really, I was really about ready to ask my uh, boss if I could have my old job back. I was that scared, you know, and I was looking at my bank account. I'm like, if this goes on much longer, you know, um, so you just have to not feel sorry for yourself, not blame it on eBay, everything. There's some got to be something you can do. Now, I watched somebody yesterday who said that um, that with the say, I don't know if you've had the sales glitch where you put something on sale and then it just says pending, 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 and it never goes on sale. And she was losing sales um, all weekend. And so what she did is she just ended all her sales and let them like run out for 24 hours and then put them back on. And her sales started generating. So you just have to look in the back door kind of things. What's going on, you know? Right. So. Yeah, it's, uh, again, I, I tell people I'm my own worst enemy, you know, you, with eBay, it's Lister Paris, you know, but um, again, I think a lot of my issue is I have some items that are probably not resellable. I mean, I think they're good. I, like, again, like you were saying, you purchase them at a certain price. Um, and you figure, oh, I can sell it for like seven dollars or ten dollars or eight dollars, but then it, it sits and sits and sits. And some of these jeans I've had listed for a year. Uh -huh. Um, and part of the problem I have now with the um automatic with the good till cancel, uh, -huh. uh they get to become stale listings. I mean, when I was when I was ending things early, editing and then relisting, it would give a new item number. And supposedly that helps with Cassini, I don't know whether it did or not. Uh -huh. But now some of these items have been like, you know, for four or five, six months uh -huh. with the same ID number. So eBay looks at them, they're stale items. They're not, they're not worth, you know, not promoting, but not worth having high in the search engine. Uh, and then I promote them too. I and mean, even with the promotions, I'm not getting sales. Now, supposedly they, they did allow the, um, you get like a double listing now. Remember for a while there, they were only giving you one or the other. It was either the promoted listing or the regular listing. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, supposedly, they're allowing promoted listings and the regular listing to both appear. Yeah. So to do a promotion, you're, you're getting it like a double double listing, per se. Mm -hmm. um, I, I every 30 to 60 days, I end my items and re and sell similar. I don't relist them. Like you said, sell similar actually gives them the I'll new number. I have to monitor that because you, you still get the, um, the notification when listings are technically ending, even though they're not ending because they're going to roll right. over. Well, I go to my seller hub every morning and I say, and it says how many are ending today. And I right. go to those items and I end them. Okay. And, and then I, and I sell similar and I tweak them. I change I, I, a photo, I, 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 you know, that's what I do. As many listings as I have right now, I really need to do that. I, I, yeah. need to get back in that yeah. I don't do it on my variation listings because it messes up your numbers. And I have a lot of variation listings right now because I do parts. Um, but anything that's a single item, um, Yes, I do that every 60 yeah. to 90 days. I don't do it every 30 days because it takes 30 days just to get it out to Google. So you're just really shooting yourself in the foot, I think, if you're only doing it every, if you're doing it every 30 days. Yeah, okay. I'm doing, you know. I, you know, it's, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't figure out all these algorithms because, like, I watch my YouTube, I look at my my analytics, and most of my analytics come from um, subscribers and or um, suggestions, you know, when you watch certain videos, like you saw reselling videos and say, uh -huh. well, if you watch, you know, Beth Reseller Rowboat or you watch Rosie Crystal, you might like this. Uh -huh. So I'd say 95% of my videos, my uh, views come from either my subscribers or recommendations from YouTube, not from Google searches, which is bad. Uh -huh. I mean, that's ideally uh -huh. you want Google bring people in, uh -huh. you want to have titles and uh -huh. things that bring people in and then they see your, your catchy thumbnails. Uh, I've been playing with my thumbnails and trying to trying to up my game on that as well. Uh -huh. uh, again, I'm not really talented at any of that stuff, but I, I, I took a, uh, a template and I altered it a little bit. And uh, I got, probably got to tweak it a little bit, but I thought it came out pretty nice. Um, and I, I ran it by um, some of my friends and I said, it looked look pretty good. I know Tiffany is not here. She's probably working on her uh, her Amazon business, but uh, I ran it by her and she said she really thought it popped a little bit better than the other one did. Uh -huh. But um Anyway, so let's just roll in a little bit about, oh, there's Miss Angie. Amazing Angie. We miss you, Angie. Beth, do you know uh, Miss Treasured Vintage, Angie? No. Hi, Angie. She's, she's a sweetheart. She lives uh, not too far from me, maybe an hour and a half in Pennsylvania. Oh, that's cool. She's got really cute dogs. Aw. She's a sweetheart. She's a I beautiful. I have two rescues myself, and they're both special needs. Yeah. Angie, hey, real stitch. Frenchie's here. Frenchie. 
And you just actually literally put a smile on my face. Thanks for being here. I, I needed to be cheered up today. <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, yeah, so let's just roll into it again. We we had discussed that you do a little bit of everything. Uh, I, what do you call them? One-offs, I guess is what we were trying to come up with the terminology. Well, I don't know. I have two eBay stores. My, my second eBay store is basically a gift shop. So it's, right, like, you you're, you're it's, like, my, it's like my fun store, you know. Right. Now you said so. you do a lot with uh, with parts, but you said you're having issues with the Houston with the uh, the bins, which is the uh, Goodwill outlet. Yeah, when I was going to Austin and San Antonio, I would get just probably forty or fifty parts a day. Um, when I go to the Houston bins, they just opened up a few months ago, and I, I barely ever get a part there. I mean, they just don't have them. So now I'm relying on going to thrift stores, garage sales to get the actual machines um, because I was taking the machines apart in the bin and just taking home the parts that I wanted to sell, you know, the lightweight parts. Sure. Um, so now I'm having to buy the machine get it out of my car, take it in, you know, do that. Just assemble it. Um, yeah, and I just assemble it <laughs> at the bins just fine. I don't want to take the base with me if I don't want the base. So, um, I mean, my, things like um, carry uh, the water reservoir. Yeah. Wh whatever. I mean, I know my character thing, something's always wrong with it. The, mm -hmm. the, the pin that spikes the thing and there's something wrong with that. It's like, mm -hmm. well, I, I wonder if they have these on eBay. I said, I bet you Beth has it available. On eBay. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you're sending me these customers. I'm getting now, no, 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 uh, no. I'm getting now messages from people wanting me to help them fix their machine. No, I would never do that. <laughs> will <know>. this <laughs> fit my machine? <laughs> Um, do you think that this will fit my machine? Do you think this, I have this piece and it's not fitting right. Do you think it's supposed to fit like this? I'm like, I don't know. What do I look like? <laughs> 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 so now I know where those people are coming no, from. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I used to, I watched a couple of your videos where you talked about that, how, how profitable that was, how you would mm -hmm. try, you get mm -hmm. something to binge for like three, four dollars and turn that into hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And I, I need to go back to Austin and San Antonio. My daughter lives near Austin. So whenever I go visit her and then there's a secret Goodwill there, um, I, took Chick, the I took Chick Picker there one time yeah, and they I'm sell so their appliances super cheap. It's a college okay. town. Okay. And I go in there and I get things for like seven bucks, you know, and I'll take those to my car. They're heavy, but I'll really? up for seven bucks, you know, get five or six or more parts out of something. Yeah. I hit that Goodwill every time I go. Um, but yeah, the bins in Austin and San Antonio for me are, there are lots of parts there. Uh, if any of y'all are there, <laughs> you know, enjoy. Wait, what's, what's, what's I'm the, jealous. What's it? Del Taco? What's it? What's the, the really good taco chain that's out there? Taco in the, Bell? No, not Taco Bell. <laughs> it's good, the good tacos. I think it's Del Taco or. Uh, the one that, uh, tacos? For me. Torchies tacos? Torchies is one of them, right. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, talks about it all the time. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's this taco place they always go to. Taco Cabana? I don't know. Tor Torchies, I hear very good things about Torchies. Yeah, Torchies is great. Yeah. When you go there, have a, have a taco from me. <laughs> <laughs> taco Bell? <laughs> I don't know. Del Taco and Taco Bell are pretty much the same. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. All right. So, so now again, so you're kind of like doing a little bit, a little bit of everything now. Um, again, you said you were having issues with the, uh, the parts. I asked I like, you about plushes. Like, so I know you were in the plushes a little bit. I like to sell blankets. Blankets. I can get blankets at the bins and they sell really well. Um, I just sold a survivor Fiji cap this morning for $50 really? on Poshmark. I got it at the oh. bins. Um, you know, so I do get some good things at the Houston bins, but it's nothing like I do in the other cities. So right. I don't know what the deal is, but it's two miles from my house. So, you know, I, I sometimes go twice a day. Well, you have that close and uh, yeah, uh, not, not to get into details guys, but watch your back at the bins. There's some, there's some uh, difficult people sometimes at the bins. You can tell them <laughs> if you want. No, 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 no. But that's had a difficult time. Beth, Beth had somebody that was upset with her because she was doing her job as a reseller. And you guys know, I mean, again, I, I've, I've tried to have some people want to discuss book selling. And eventually I want to try to book somebody. Uh, the people that I know are working during the day. Um, so eventually I want to get on booksellers. But basically what Beth did was what a lot of other resellers do is they grab, they go through books. Oh, this looks interesting. Boom. This looks interesting. Boom. Whether it be your Ikea bag or whatever. 
and then you put them in your bag, you put them in your car, and then you scan them later. Well, this gentleman apparently got upset with Beth doing what 99% of the other resellers do, and he was actually sourcing out of her cart. He says, you got all the good stuff. I'm gonna... And then, long story short, Beth had to get the guy kicked out, and then it was a whole brouhaha. Yeah, security was that, called, management was called. Right. He was right. trying to get me kicked out is what he was trying to do, and he was yelling right. at me. and For doing your job as a reseller. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he had his little scanner, you know. Yeah, he had a scanner. And, and I said, you've got this whole building of bins right. you could be going through, but you're going to get on to me, you know, and come get my books. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, was telling, I was telling Beth when I used to, I mean, I used to go to, um, when I was a little bit healthier, I still had medical issues, but it wasn't as bad as it currently. And I would go to like Goodwill on Sundays. It would have like dollar days. So I'd get through like 20 minutes before the open. Cause we'd roll like scurry up to the front of the store to try to get the first dibs on everything. And I used to have people like fight me for positions in line and then fight you for a car. And I was telling Beth, I, I would go, I, that's when I was selling jeans and I'm trying to get rid of my jeans, my ladies women's jeans. But uh, I took a bunch, I would put my car like, like catty corner, just off to the side a little bit from where all the jeans were. There's like three or four racks typically of jeans, at least the women's, the men's were on the men's section. So I would grab my stuff and then I would throw it in my car, you know, and come back. I had people shopping out of my car, literally like I would find the stuff and they would like, take stuff out of my car. So whoa, 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 whoa. I had other people argue with me. I was discussing just like Beth was, and I were discussing earlier, a uh, pre-chat, um, how lonely reselling can be. So when I go out, I try to make conversation with people, whether it be retail clerks or customers. Or So I was making conversation with this woman and telling her some of my medical issues and um, talking about going to the eBay open. We'll get into that a little bit, a little bit later. Um, and this woman like chastises me. You don't have to talk about that. Blah, 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 blah. I said, whoa, 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 excuse me. I said, look, there's your car. If you don't like it, you can go sit in your car. I said, I am not cursing. I'm not discussing religion. I'm not discussing politics. I'm having a friendly conversation. If you don't like it, you can go. I mean, it's like people start with me all the time. It's like, do I look like, I mean, I'm, I'm six foot three and I'm over 300 pounds. I don't want to be over 300 pounds, but I'm a big guy. I'm surprised how many people that start with me. It's like, and I'm not a violent person, but it's like, guys, just, just please just like live and let live, please. And I tell people I live by the golden rule. I try to be nice to people. I was telling somebody the other day, I was, I was going to the supermarket to pick a few things up. And there was this gentleman, he was elderly gentleman. He was sitting on, on a bench by the exit and I could see he was, you know, he's having a difficult day. Um, so I said, and he was wearing the, I know you're in Houston, but I'm, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles, Philadelphia person, you know, Living in the Delaware Valley. So he had his Eagles gear on. I said, you know what? Let me be a nice guy and say hello to this gentleman and start a conversation about the Philadelphia Eagles. He's sitting here by himself. Obviously, he's, he looks like he's not feeling well, and he's probably waiting for somebody to help him out to the car or whatever. So I made a conversation with the guy talking about the Eagles, and I bet you know what? I probably made that man's day. What did it take me? Two, three minutes? Not like I had anything important to do. I just discussed the Eagles and, you know, what do you think they're going to do this? You know, they're, they're, they have, this guy's hurt and that guy's hurt. And it it doesn't, it doesn't kill you to be nice to people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I would do with, with reselling. I would be friendly with the clerks. And again, it's all, and we talk about networking. You know, network with, with, with uh, retail managers if you're doing arbit retail arbitrage. Uh, network with other resellers. Maybe that you can help each other if you have something that you're not familiar with, they can help you. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't kill you to be nice to people. You know, but again, there's there's always there's always a person or two that, that you know that are unhappy with you, and they're they're going to start stuff. So it is what it is. Um, and I see, I should I should have taken notes because oh, let me while I'm thinking of it, guys, let me let me do this real quick. I don't want to forget to do this because I, I have Beth on. Let let me show you this real fast. We're going to do this, Beth. Bear with me. It's nothing scary. Don't be afraid. <laughs> so okay, uh, we will do this, and we will do this. And... Guys, what is he what doing? What am I doing? Uh, we're going to do Chrome Tab. And we're going to do this. Uh-oh. What do you think, guys? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Where did you get that picture? Oh, my gosh. Off your video. <laughs> That's where Beth and oh, I, I met. Forgot, for I forgot time. about that, man. I yeah, forgot about that, that. I didn't want to get through the whole video. It was kind of long, but it was kind of neat. Um, That's so embarrassing. <laughs> you look, you look like Gordon. For you, look yeah, like I was trying to mimic his face there. I don't normally uh, frown, so 
Right. Well, Beth yeah. and I had met for the first time at. Um... I'm glad I'm not wearing the same top that I was wearing that day. Oh, why was that? <laughs> That'd be really bad. Oh my word! Oh my gosh! Okay, let me that get out like, of there. That was a that was a fun night. Yeah, I'm ready to go back. Uh, so, is this a good time to talk about resale robot or? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Because that you know we're talking about eBay open. Let me, so. let me let me switch over to you. We'll do that. What? Why me? I wanted to show Beth. Why is this? That's good. I don't know why it's not. Don't show just me. <laughs> I used to know how to do this, and I forget. Oh, here we go. That's good. There don't we go. Don't show me. Don't just show me. I, I, I think <laughs> I would learn how to use StreamYard by now. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> reseller rowboat. The purpose of reseller rowboat is Which is your YouTube channel. Which That's is my YouTube channel. If you just go and click the three dots next to my name, um, and I'll just say hello here so you can do that, um, and subscribe and hit the bell. I'm trying to be a hub for the reseller community on a personal level. And so, like, what that means is if you have a birthday coming up, I'll highlight you on my birthday reel every month. I'll ask people to send you birthday messages uh, via social media um, to let them know, let you know that we're thinking about you on your special day. Also, if you have any concerns, specifically medical, stress related, business related, does it matter? I can put that out in the community and people can pray for you, send you good thoughts. You know, we don't send you money, but we send you, you know, the, the support, right? The spiritual support. Um, if you uh, interact with my channel in any way, you have an oar behind me on my backdrop. That's what those oars are. And we have different projects that we do. Right now, we're doing a project for eBay Open 2020, um, talking about how we can, you know, what our budget is, how we're going to get there. Everybody has a different budget, how we're going to save that money. We keep up to date on, you know, how everybody's doing. So, yeah, if you're interested, just, uh, you know, subscribe to Reseller Rowboat. That's what it's all about. That's why I'm to bring up that picture because I figured I would have that up to remind <laughs> me to have you speak about Reseller Rowboat and, and about yeah. the eBay Open. Yeah, and we also, um, every week, well, not every week, but when I go live, I also give you a chance to, like, share videos that you've seen or channels that you've been watching that you can share with other resellers that you find interesting, um, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Okay, you're off the big screen. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Beth and I were discussing pre-chat, um, Reselling can be lonely. It's like, and the way Beth described this, it's like one big um, community. Like these, all the resellers are kind of like your coworkers. And I told her, I guess like in any other work situation, there's people you get along with really well, people you get along with not so well, and people you just work with. And that's kind of how, and that's how reselling is, and that's how YouTube is. And the, what's nice about YouTube is it, it has is a conduit to kind of connect people. Mm -hmm. Um, so like Beth, Beth likes to have, again, when people come in her chat, she has, makes them moderators when they've been there a few times. So she knows that they were, they're regular on her channel. Uh, she likes to get their first names cause she doesn't like to, you know, call people by their screen names. She likes to call them by her first name. And, um, she likes to acknowledge people in her chat guys. And again, I ap apologize if I miss anybody in the chat. Uh, I try to do that and I have my moderators in the chat and hopefully they're saying hello to people. Um, because I get kind of sometimes over involved not over involved but I'm, I'm concentrating on my guest and sometimes i miss questions in the chat so uh so beth is basically she's took in the uh, the mantle and the torch so to speak and she said um all right guys uh this is going to be our community uh, outreach center if people are having health issues or uh, they're having whatever issues and they need somebody to talk to or they have questions um reach out to me um, I'm gonna have to put your Instagram while you say you do a lot on Instagram as well, Beth. I, I didn't put Yeah, I'm on Instagram, um, reseller robo at reseller okay. robo. Um, okay. also what got this started was you know, we are all on different, we're in different videos every day. We're going to different chat rooms. We can't be every place at one time. And so I guess it was about three months ago, I found out that one of my reseller friends was, was in the hospital. And I didn't even know for like three days because I just didn't happen to go into the right chat room at the right time when people were talking about her. And so that's why I think we've, we had some kind of central place where you could go to find that kind of information out, you know, um, that would be really helpful because I, I've missed people that I didn't know were ill 
or lost their job or, you know, whatever. And I'd like to send them a, you know, a message letting them know I'm thinking about them. So. Okay. Now I, I know we didn't want to forget to discuss reselling rowboat, uh, but I did want to discuss a little bit about organization. Uh, did you have your bullet sure. journal handy? Yeah, of course. Bit. It's like an extension of my arm. I okay. always and have we it. discussed earlier why, why you do these things because, because you have, you have ODD. Or OCD. OCD. I don't. I don't know why I do these things. Um, well, you see, you have OCD. I mean, I, your mind. Yeah, has I, I started um, bullet journaling like about a year ago, year and a half ago, and basically, what a bullet journal is is you're just. Um, it's like a planner, but you make it yourself. So I don't know how many of you have ever bought a planner or and tried to use it and half the pages you don't use, or you think there's pages in there that there should be there, so you're you know pasting them in. So a bullet journal is just a, a, a planner that you make yourself. And so every month my bullet journal looks totally different. Although I do always have a calendar. Last month, my I have a theme every month. Last month was uh, Downton Abbey. Everyone in this book is going to be some kind of either a movie or a TV show I've decided to do. But I always have a theme. You don't have to. You don't have to be artistically challenged. I actually do have a playlist on my channel called uh, bullet journaling for the unartistically challenged uh, for the artistically challenged. Um, but yeah, so it's just a place for you to keep, you know, these are my thoughts. I have positives and negatives every month, something that negative happened that day. Some, you know, something positive. Um, I do that. Um, I keep track of my uh, listing. So I usually have something that I will color in for each listing every um, every time I list something. And the colors mean I did them all on that day. So the yellow. Yeah, I mean, I'm having, I'm having a brain freeze. I knew the colors yeah. meant something. I couldn't remember. Yeah, what, that just means all those purples I did that, oh, that day, day. Those were parts. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, yeah, I probably so parted right. out like seven machines that day. Uh, so, you know, wow. that's best. You can tell, you know, one day yeah, I might have only done this. Just, Holy this one day I only did like three. See, we look like you had fifty the next day though. Yeah. So I mean, I yeah. Wow. So see, I I parted out things. So yeah, that's how I do it. Um, I keep track of my sales uh, in each store. I mean, I just do different things. So if you but if you go to my channel, you'll see my bullet journal every month. I always bring it out and and show you you know what I'm doing. I'm very transparent. I mean, I'm pretty honest about my numbers and. You know, I don't ever meet all of my goals. <laughs> and I think it's good that you do make goals that, you know, you're not going to meet them all. I like to over, you know, right. You know, be optimistic, um, but don't stress yourself out about it. So then you just mark off um, with an X the things that you do. And then if you don't get them done, you just put an arrow that's called migrating and you just migrate that task to the next day. Um, if you uh, Google bullet journaling, you will come up with all, you'll see all kinds of wonderful, what we call spreads um, that cover the pages of all different kinds of things that you can track. Uh, but don't let these artistic graphic artists um, put you off of bullet journaling because <laughs> their, their things look yeah. like, you know, I mean, there's some of them are selling their spreads and I don't buy them because that's my whole point. I was buying things and I wasn't using them. So I'd rather make my own, you know, and use every single page to my advantage. Right. So every month it looks different. Sure. So, but, but that's the only way I get anything done. And my, my wife knows when I'm looking for my bullet journal, she, I get this panic look on my face and she says, you've lost your bullet journal. <laughs> lost my bullet journal. Have to have it. <laughs> I, I lost my glasses. I'm not, again. I'm not going. What I'm usually pretty good about that because I know I I can't see the computer if I don't have my glasses. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of getting close to the screen to try to read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put my glasses on. Oh, hey, do page picker. How are you? And eat sleep. Amazon. Hi, Tiffany. Tiffany joined us. Tiffany, yeah, your ears and, ringing. And I mentioned I you earlier. Know. I don't know if Maggie Doodle's still here, but I want to tell Maggie that my Amazon sales have started to uh, take off again. I was having real tough with Amazon too. Oh, yeah, right. you started, you it was just like it. every single store I had was like, you know, it was like I, I saw on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Etsy, Amazon. I think that's it. Um, and I that's do rough. have TrueGather <laughs> accounts, but they're deactivated right now. But. What was the last one? Yeah, uh, True Gather, but it's kind of like a bonanza. 
Oh, it's like a bonanza. You know, I have never sold anything on it, but I haven't had it for that long. And I like I've had it deactivated since I went out of town, and I don't know. Um, what, I don't. What are you selling on? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I know you just recently started your Amazon. What you were selling? I, books I'm just doing all? books. That's just it. And you're doing. Yeah. I forget. Are you doing FBA or FBM? I have both. You do both. Okay, well, that's a good question. How do you determine what you ship in the Amazon for FBA and what you you fulfill as merchant? How do you determine? That? Um, if it has over a million rank, but like it's a really high profit book, I just keep it at home, you know. And okay, so if it's not it from home turn, because like I don't want to be very profitable. You yeah, I don't want to pay piece. Amazon to store it. Yeah, if Got I know it. it's going to take a year and a half to yeah. sell or whatever, um, that's how I'm doing it. Um, and another thing I do, I use Scout IQ. Is when I'm at the bins, if I see DVDs or some even VHSs I've done that are sealed in the plastic in the wrap, I go ahead and scan them on my Scout IQ as if I could sell them on Amazon, even though right. I can't. And if the rank is good, I take them home and I sell them on eBay. Sure. And sure. Um, my Fulfilled by Merchant is not doing well. Like I haven't sold anything in months on Fulfilled by Merchant, but those are also cross posted on eBay and they're selling on eBay but they're not selling on fulfilled by merchant. And I don't know why, but I, I just take them off of my fulfilled by merchant when they sell. Well, I guess there's no yeah. really, again, I get, I'm pleading, uh, my innocence, pleading uh, ignorance. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's no really way to cross post from Amazon to eBay because it's a different, totally different platform. I know you can do things like with say Macquarie and eBay and, well, I do. I cross post my FBMs. I'm uh, if I said FBA, okay. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm just saying with because with, they have the ISDNs and they have the their own pictures and this that and the yeah, other. Yeah, I whenever I put it on fulfilled by merchant, I also put it on eBay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but it almost always sells on eBay first. I I don't know why. Um, um, do you do you sell it at a premium one Amazon or the same price? Uh, yeah, pretty much what I would sell it on FBM so, or fulfilled by merchant. I don't. I don't know why they're selling, you know, like I sold a Don I mean, like Tiffany. They, they may know why maybe because it's fulfilled by merchant as opposed to fulfilled by Amazon. Again, I, I, I want to do want to get into selling books again. I, you know, uh, actually, I actually, you and I had discussed as I discussed in the show, I reached out to Jason, uh, but Jason is actually, whoop, there goes my earplug. Jason is actually working for Amazon part time. Right. Uh, five days a week. Mm -hmm. So he works when my show typically is on. So I think I'm going to try to do a, a separate show, like maybe a Monday show or, or maybe the evening. I guess I'm late, though. I'll probably do a Monday show. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to have Jason on discuss the book selling. Mm -hmm. You know, the transition when he you know, was doing the jeans and full-time with uh, eBay, and he transitioned into Amazon. You need uh, to have Maggie on. Maggie's amazing at Amazon. I would love that Maggie on. I, I'm Guys, I'm always looking for, um, for guests, and um, I just know people that come in my chat and people that are recommended to me by other resellers. So uh, you guys can reach out to me. I actually have a, um, uh, I'm pretty sure I have it in my description below. If I have, if I haven't included it, I'll include it after the show. But basically it's just um, adamsexploits at gmail.com. Um, don't, don't, don't get upset about the way, how it spells out. I didn't think about that when I created the channel because because there's, there's no hyphen in it, but it's adamsexploits at gmail.com. So guys, so so that, that's the other thing I use my Scout IQ for, you know, when I'm at the bins and there's a box like a game or a puzzle and sure, it's sure. sealed, I just go ahead and scan it because I know I can't sell it. I'm, Never know. I'm gated in practically everything. Well, that's the thing. You so know, I, again, I, but I probably have gonna, Tiffany on. Um, but I have but, it on eBay and it, and it still sells. So I, I just go ahead and grab it, you know. But uh, I, sold, I can't tell you how many DVDs I've sold on eBay. Um, you would you would think that I guess again I don't know again I'm pleading my ignorance some of these things would become um, uh, un ungated so to speak mm -hmm. after the first of the year I know I know Amazon's very strict about selling certain things uh, Q4 mm -hmm. um, and I know I discussed and maybe I'm using the wrong terminology but my understanding is there's some like Facebook groups and private Facebook groups where they'll tell you like you know purchase so and so from this wholesaler and then you can get ungated in that category they'll give you an invoice i mean i know there's workarounds again um i like to get involved with the books because i figure that's something um it doesn't take up a lot of space mm -hmm. uh, i could but you're saying you're having issues with fbm so maybe i should look into doing them um fba and of course it's, it's 40 dollars per month for the professional account 
Right. And I don't sell enough on Amazon. I just started Amazon a couple months ago, so I'm not selling 40 items a month. That right. warrants me to buy the $40 right. and I don't source enough to get that many. I mean, I've tried, but it's just not happening. Gotcha. Um, so I know D with flipping particles, she does fulfilled by merchant prime. And so she ships from home in one day. So she, her fulfilled by merchant works. I mean, she sells a lot fulfilled by merchant because she's prime fulfilled by merchant. Um, I can't do that because first you have to have a, a, a professional seller account, then you have to meet certain standards after that, you know, and I haven't gotten that far what was, yet. What was Maggie Dito saying? No, I'm not getting it, guys. I, I apologize. I'm trying to pay well, attention. No CDs, no DVDs. You no, know, I don't really understand that if they're sealed, but that's their rule. So I'll sell yeah, them on sure. eBay and eBay gets the money. So CDs so. and DVDs are, mm -hmm. are gated for everyone, I guess, mm -hmm. not for everyone, for mm -hmm. most people. Yeah. Okay. Not for everyone, but it's just very right. common. I mean, right. I, I was so ignorant in the beginning. It said, oh, needs approval, request approval. So I requested approval. And three days later, I'm like, how come they haven't approved me yet? And everybody's like, no one gets approved for DVDs, Beth. And I'm like, oh, they said, you can wait for the rest of your life. I'm like, okay. That's probably why. What? Okay, yeah, Maggie's saying unless you can provide invoices from a distributor, yeah, because there's so much counterfeit, I guess, out on you, and some Maybe of this stuff so. is like yeah. perfect. I mean, uh, I mean, you live near the city. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't buy this stuff, but I mean, you'll see guys selling stuff from the the shopping you know, parking lot of shopping centers, and it's like mm -hmm. this looks like it's brand new from the manufacturer. And mm -hmm. again, they they somehow they get them from wherever they get them, they duplicate it and put it in a fancy box. Right. And it looks like it's. I guess that's why there's so much counterfeit out there. So uh, we're pushing about 50 minutes, guys, and I try to keep my uh, interviews to around an hour, and I know Beth has work to do, both jobs probably today. Um, so I just want to see if there are any questions we may have missed. Uh, typically, there's like about a 30 a, bag or so. I'm getting ready to go out in the garage and finish my inventory system. I'm building shelves. That's right. I meant to ask you that. Um, that was another I got, for you. And I actually have a video I'm making about my process, but I got about halfway up. Okay. And then I had to stop because the instruction said I needed these little couplers, couplings or whatever. Okay. And they weren't in the box. <laughs> I know, cupcakes. <laughs> and so I called the company and they said, oh, did you buy these shelves on Amazon? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, well, we don't include those in the Amazon boxes. Um, oh, you have to get those from us. That's a mistake. And I said, <laughs> well, okay, well, my inventory is, I kind of lied. I said, my inventory is out in the elements. I'm not real happy right now. <laughs> um, I said, can you overnight <laughs> these? Of course not. We can't overnight them. I said, I bought four units. You still can't overnight them? No, we can't. So I've been waiting. So my shelves have been halfway up for five or six days. I hate when it happens. Um, you got but they came today, so I'm going to be out there. Came today? Okay. Yeah, they came today, so that's what I'm going to be doing the rest of the day is putting shelves <laughs> together, and uh, with my injured hand. So yeah, I know. That's yeah. The thing Beth says. Could you explain that? You have what? I have psoriatic arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis. Okay. Yeah. And I know it flares up from time to time, and it's difficult for mm -hmm. you to sort of get the bins and. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, yeah. You know, we all have something when we get to be this age, right, Adam? You know, it's so not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. My my doctor, I saw my doctor this morning, my my, my GP, and she was like, uh, you're only 59. You're on, you're on Medicare. I said, yeah. I said, she goes, you see a lot of doctors. I said, yeah. I said, look at the doctors. I say, there's a reason I want disability. <laughs> Maggie's saying, Adam, you and I should meet up in person. I'm in Cherry Hill every Wednesday. Oh, what? Maggie, I'm 10 minutes from Cherry Hill. Not even. Oh, my gosh. I am Not so even. jealous. Perfect. Oh, I have to. Yeah, yeah. I want to see that video. Yeah, we can, we, there's a, well, if you know Cherry Hill, there's a million places you go to. We go to a coffee shop. We can go to uh, Wegmans, has that big upstairs section where you get a cup of coffee and a uh, little treat. We can sit upstairs and discuss that. Um, Maggie, uh, send me an email to my Adams exploits. Um, yeah, do that to my Adams exploits at gmail.com and then we'll exchange contact information. I mean, that, that's perfect. Again, again uh, you know, I do the show this time of day. So are you, are you there in the morning or oh, we'll discuss it offline? Okay. So guys, I'm, were there any other questions for Beth and Beth? Was there anything else that you wanted to bring I'm up? I'm just glad that I got to be on today because, um, normally I'd be tutoring at this time. Um, my student is having orthodontal work this week. So I okay. was given a week break of tutoring. So okay. uh, normally I would not be able to, uh, you know, I don't even get to watch your show. I always have to watch it on replay. Right. So, 
Okay, so were there any again? Again, I asked this, and, the, and again, you know, I, since we have a few minutes, there don't seem to be any other questions. Um, I'm going to ask this the typical reseller interview question, uh, and again, I'm, I'm this is not a difficult question, but you might have to think about it a little bit. What was your biggest flip? You know, on the top of your head, you something that comes to mind. I paid two dollars and I sold it for one hundred fifty dollars. Is there any? I mean, people ask. Uh, I don't. Oh, think I never. I've, asked I've, it's interesting. Oh gosh, what is that thing? And you called? ever said that with parts, right? Yeah, this thing is called the pitcher. It's called the pitcher. A pitcher. And P I T C H E R. Okay, I like the pitcher. And I paid like seven dollars for it at Goodwill. And what it does is it oxidizes your water. And I sold it for like I think a hundred and thirty dollars. Oxidizes your water. It, yeah. Uh huh. Huh. And it had it was it was out of the box, but it had the instructions inside it, so I could tell that it hadn't even been used. So I just had it basically like an open box kind of thing. So knew those sell for you know close to two fifty something like that. So I knew I had a winner on that one. Yeah, that's great. Looks Guys, like I'm having problems with my my stream yards. So for some reason, the chat I'm typing things is not coming up. Uh, a crystal asked me, do you work with higher grades? No, I, the highest grade I've ever taught, it was sixth grade. So unfortunately, no. They used to call my mother, uh, mother hen. <laughs> At one point she was really a kindergarten or first grade teacher. And for a little bit of period of time, then in fourth grade, and she was really out of place with the fourth grader. She, she really liked to be like the, like the grandmother to the, like the, the kindergartners and the first graders. I think she taught like 90% of her career was first grade and near the end was kindergartner. So that's, I mean, that's what she really enjoyed doing. Hi, Derek. You yeah, do it uh, in South Jersey as well. Well, maybe you, your exit 15 on 295. Maybe you, you do it. You can meet us for coffee too, or we meet in the Cherry Hill area. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna move by the way uh, you do it i don't know what your first name is but i'm trying to move down to delaware if i ever get my act together because uh, the property taxes are killing me here in new jersey and i, I need a rancher because of my health issues but i'll be closer to you when i move down to, to delaware so okay guys did i did i miss hey derek thanks for joining us uh were there any questions that i may have missed guys uh michelle or anybody my my uh trivia expert michelle my my uh phone a friend <laughs> Guys, if you, again, I mention this every show. I, oh, I didn't mention Casey. I'll mention Casey the Rockstar Flipper just because I got to mention Casey. And I always mention uh, Michelle that she's my trivia expert. So if you ever need any trivia answered, go to Michelle Lofton. Michelle Lofton knows everything about everything. So uh, you live in Wildwood in the summer. Or your wife is a teacher. Okay. Hi, Myra Lane. You grew up in Paulsboro. I, I used to sell liquor in Paulsboro. I used to sell <laughs> wholesale liquor in in Paulsboro, <laughs> Burt's Liquors. I'm sure you know what Burt's Liquors is. <laughs> Some of the places in Paulsboro. Uh, okay, guys. So I guess that's about it. Uh, again, guys, if you're not subscribed, if you're watching a replay, please uh, subscribe to my channel. There's a lot of interesting uh, reseller interviews on my channel. Uh, and again, like I said earlier, I'm always looking for new guests on the show. So if you can please like, subscribe, uh, comment, and share if you would. Uh, again, I think there's a lot of valuable information, and we, we try to keep it a uh, – drama free zone and try to keep everybody you know friendly and and, and nice and everything in our, my channel at least that's what i try to do uh, i try to keep uh, positive people on as much as possible and uh, beth is one of my my friends that i met at ebay open and she's a positive lady and she's a hard worker working two full-time jobs and i appreciate her making time for us today bye amelia i didn't see you in here and karen oh, amelia, i didn't realize amelia was in there I, I, yeah I just, and i, I didn't see karen at the beach either I meant to make a note about that. I always forget to say that. Guys, if you're in the chat and you're a lurker, just please type hello in the chat. So I can, <laughs> like, because a lot of people say, oh, I watch your channel all the time. I never said, so, well, I don't know. How do I know? I'm not psychic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for being here. And we'll catch you the next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Bye.